Greetings. Today we're going to talk about Christ's promises to you. Now, most people don't think Christ is promising them anything. Some people do. Jesus wants all people to be a part of the great promises that he is offering. Now, you may have been taught that this is not true, but the Jesus promises can be yours if you learn to trust the words of Jesus first before you trust the words of human teachers. Because Jesus said many human teachers would lead people in the wrong direction. Jesus' words will never fail you. The 66 book Bible ends in Revelation 22 21. In the last five verses of <clears throat> that book of God's messages to humans, Jesus says this. This is Revelation 22, 17. Let him who thirsts come, whoever desires, they're very important words, anybody who wants, let him take of the water of life freely, referring to the Holy Spirit of God Almighty. Jesus wants no one to miss out on eternal life. Now, the teachers in the world often say God only wants a few in his kingdom and everybody else gets sent to hell. Not true. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord, God, Jesus, is not willing. It's not their will. They don't want this to happen. That anybody should perish, meaning be dead forever, but that all, everybody, all people should come to repentance. Now in Acts 26, 18, it has a great explanation of what it means to repent. A lot of people are confused, a lot of people are taught one way, a lot of people taught another, but here in this Acts 26, 18 is a beautiful summation of what it means to repent. So it says, now these are the words of Jesus Christ to the Apostle Paul, and Paul is now having it written down, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness. We live in a world of darkness. To turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan. This is Satan's world. Satan is the god of this world until Jesus takes over. The power of Satan to the power of God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance amongst those who are sanctified by faith in me, says Jesus, which fully means faith in the words Jesus spoke. People have faith in Jesus and often ignore the words that Jesus spoke. Jesus explains in Revelation what is needed for each person to receive the huge promises of God. There are eight critical verses that tell us who will be enjoying the God promises into forever. Revelation 2, 7. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Tree of life, reference to eternal life. Next, Revelation 2, 11. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Other Bible passages explain Second death means dead forever. Third one, Revelation 2.17, to him who overcomes. Notice all of these passages are starting to with to him who overcomes. We have to be overcomers. I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, meaning food for eternal life. Revelation 2.26, to him who overcomes. Jesus keeps repeating those words and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. I would like to have power over one or two nations and knock their heads together and, and quit. Putin is invading Ukraine. I would stop that if I had the power over the nation of Russia. Russia, boom, it would be stopped. These first four focus us on being overcomers who reject Satan's ways of the world so they can be given the benefits of God's great promises listed here. Now, I said there were eight verses. Next, we look at the last four. Revelation 3, 5. 
He who overcomes shall be clothed with white garments, and I will not blot out of his, na his name out of the book of life. If you're in the book of life, you get to live forever. If you're blotted out of the book of life, you end up dead forever. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Number six, Revelation 3.12. To him who overcomes, Jesus, all seven churches get this same phrase, to him who overcomes. I will, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write on him my, the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, and I will write on him my new name. Jesus' new name in the future will be known, right? Nowadays, if you want to be, if you want proof that you're in the FBI, you have to show evidence, you have to show a badge, you have to show identification. Number seven, Revelation 3.21, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Christ is going to be ruling all the earth. And that's why you would be given power over the nations, because you would be sitting with Christ on his throne. You'd be part of his government. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So <clears throat> right now, the father is on the throne in heaven and Jesus is sitting with him. And they are managing and watching and directing the events of human activities down here on earth. <clears throat> Number eight is found in the second last chapter of the Bible. Revelation 21, <clears throat> 7. To him who overcomes, to him who overcomes shall inherit all things. All things, everything. Wow. And I will be his God and he shall be my child. These eight verses sum up the way each person can be a part of the great promises of Jesus. These promises are added to the encouragement that Jesus gives to the seven churches back in Asia, back in 95 AD when this was written. So Jesus writes to each of the churches, but he wants all Church of Jesus members for the next 2,000 years, right, meaning from when he died and this, these words were written until today, 2,000 years worth of time, 2,000 years worth of church members, right, he wants them to work towards receiving these big promises. He wants them excited about it. He wants us to be pushing forward to this fantastic. People look forward to a great retirement. They, they save a lot of money. They, <coughs> they are eager for the last day they have to be at work, then they retire, and then they, then they do the things they really want to do. This is God's way of saying, I have big promises for you if you are an overcomer. Jesus keeps repeating the phrase, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So every time Jesus speaks to one of these churches, He's saying, everybody, anybody who wants to hear what's going on, pay attention to the words to each of the churches. Right? So <clears throat> for most of the seven churches, Jesus praises their good actions, and then he points out their failures, then he encourages them with the promises. <clears throat> Jesus expects all 2,000 years worth of Jesus church members to do the good actions referenced in these seven churches and to avoid the failures referenced in these seven churches and be excited about ending up with the promises. The first church in Asia then was the Ephesus church. And he says to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. These are all very good traits that everybody should strive to accomplish. These activities are good in, the Christ, in Christ's eyes. So he wants all generations of Christians to do the same things. And then he addresses their failures. Revelation 2, 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember from where you have fallen, repent, 
do the first works, the excitement you had when you first came to the knowledge of the truth, or else I will come quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Lampstand referring to the church in Ephesus. So he's saying, <coughs> you won't have a church. If you don't repent, if you don't get it together, the church will be gone. Verse 7, he says to he who has an ear, anybody who wants to listen, let him hear. Let him hear what the, the, the Spirit is saying to the churches, this time the church of Ephesus. To him who overcomes will I grant, give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Tree of life reference to eternal life. The next church is the Smyrna church. And this church <clears throat> is in tribulation. So Jesus says, verse 10 of Revelation 2, do not fear any of the things which you're about to suffer. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life, life eternal. So that's the message for all Jesus' followers. Be faithful unto death. Verse 11, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. So all Jesus' church members, for these 2,000 years up until now, should be faithful unto death, looking for eternal life on the other side of this life, this human life. Next is the Pergamos church, Revelation 2.12. To the angel of the church of Pergamos write, I know your works, that you, that you hold fast to my name, my authority, my responsibilities, and you did not deny my faith. That was the good side. Next comes the correction, verse 14. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Verse 16, repent. Right? Jesus is calling people to straighten up and fly right. Repent or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. You don't know, want that to happen in your case. So, to him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give of the hidden manna to eat, picturing the food for eternal life. The church in Thyatira that is next. Revelation 2, 18. To the angel of the church in Thyatira, these things says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire. Revelation 2, 19. I know your works, love, service, faith, your patience, as for your works, the last, your latter works, are more than the first. Their works have been growing and expanding, and this is all things that Jesus is looking forward in all of his church members in the following 2,000 years up till today and into the future. Revelation 2.20, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce. I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Then I will cast her into the sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. Jesus is always encouraging and eager for people to overcome their failures, turn around, make amends, get things straight, and, and go down the path that is laid out in these seven churches. Verse 23, I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts, and I will give to each one according to your works. Jesus here tells all 2,000 years worth of Bible readers that his job is to see our hearts and our minds as no one else can see them, and to reward each person at the end of their life according to what was going on in their hearts and in their minds. Revelation 2.24, And I say to the rest in Thyatira, I will put no other burden. <clears throat> Hold fast what you have until I come. Verse 26, To him who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, the end of his life or her life, to him I will give power over the nations. These are powerful positions in God's future world government. Right? We're impressed by what goes on in the American government, maybe sometimes, 
right? This is God's government that will rule all of planet Earth for 1,100 years. And I will give him the morning star. Verse 29, to him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. It's so repetitive, but Jesus is making sure we don't miss the point. Everybody in all ages needs to listen to all of the good things for all seven churches, all of the failures in the seven churches, and all the promises to all the seven churches. In Revelation chapter 3, we see the final three of the seven churches. Revelation 3, 1, to the angel of the church of Sardis, write, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wow! What could that look like? What would it look like to have a name that you're the church of Jesus, but you're actually a dead church of Jesus? This church is in serious trouble. Verse 2, be watchful, says Jesus, and strengthen the things that remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect or mature before God. Remember, therefore, how you received and heard what you heard, how you got excited when you first came to understand how God is working with mankind and hold fast and repent. Verse five, he who overcomes shall be clothed with white garments and I will not blot out of his name, his name out of the book of life and I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. To him who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Keeps on repeating that. Next is the church in ancient Philadelphia. We have a modern Philadelphia. This is the ancient Philadelphia. Verse seven, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut that open door. For you have a little strength, but I've made this open door for you. And you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. All of these are positive things he wants others in all generations to follow. Behold, I come quickly or speedily is a better translation. Hold fast what you have, that no one takes your crown. God wants to give us a crown of eternal life. To him who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, part of the government of God. And, and he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now Jesus brings us to the last of the seven churches in Asia, in verse 14, Revelation 3, 14, the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. And I could wish that you were cold or hot. The problem is they were lukewarm. Here is a picture of church members who were lukewarm about their calling. Verse 16. So then, because you are lukewarm church members, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That's a pretty powerful picture Jesus is painting and saying, you may be a church member, but if you're not hot for the word of God, right? If you're totally cold, it's easy. You, you lose your church, you lose your lampstand, right? And, and you, there's no sitting on the fence. Lukewarm is like sitting on the fence. Which way are you going to go? Okay, you've got to make up your mind. He says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Very strong words. Because you say, notice this, this is, this is how this church in general viewed themselves. Because you say, I am rich, and have become wealthy, spiritually speaking, and have need of nothing spiritually, you do not know, says Jesus, that you are, in fact, in reality, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Can you imagine this church having these words read out to them in church services? Jesus writes you this letter. You think you're great, but in reality, he sees you as wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Man, would there be a fuss in that church on that day. 19, as you, as many as I love, says Jesus, I rebuke and chasten. That's the whole theme here, right? If you're falling short, he rebukes and chastens, and he wants people to change their direction. Therefore, he says, be zealous and repent. Verse 21, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Oh, just, just picture you, put your name there. Picture Jesus is sitting on his throne. 
and next to him is this person and put your name on, on their name tag. You sitting next to Jesus on his throne. As I have overcome come and sat down with my father on his throne. That's how this thing works. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus is eager to give his great promises to those who are overcomers. We have to learn what overcoming is. We have to see the evil in the world. We have to re reject it, refuse it, and, and live the way God wants us to live. Jesus gives all this information about the seven churches to help each person throughout 2,000 years, anybody who's reading their Bibles, on their road to success and receiving the great promises. Christ wants you and me and every person. He wants everybody. He doesn't want anybody to miss out to connect to all that he has been saying to all of these seven churches. He wants no one to end up dead forever. That's just the way Jesus is. So he spends all this time encouraging us all to strive to be overcomers and then to receive God's fabulous great promises.